Well, back with the breakfast, and at this point, we'll be looking at uh, the inclusion of persons with disability in a political process. However, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that many of the 19 million Nigerians living with disability were registered voters, and they would do everything to dismantle barriers that exclude them from electoral process. Well, according to Xpath, marginalization of people with disability extends beyond the elections uh, to all the facets of life in Nigeria. Many have complained of inadequate health care and lack of uh, public access you know, to public facilities, however. Now, prior to 2023, INEC policy framework was launched for the inclusion of persons living with disabilities in all aspects of the electoral process and to reduce the barriers that they face. The electoral body now allows people to include their particular disability on their voter registration so it can make plans for their needs. Also, uh, the 2022 uh, signed Electoral Act mandates that the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC takes a reasonable step to ensure that persons living with disabilities are provided with suitable means of communication during the elections and, you know, prior to the elections as well. Now, joining us to understand how far this framework has been implemented is Omotoke uh, Olubude. I hope I got your name very well. Yes, indeed. Good <laughs> She's morning. the uh, founder of the Autism Awareness Foundation. Uh, Motoke, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Happy for New Year. Me. Yes, thank please. You. But I'd like to get your overview of the inclusion. I mean, generally, before we delve into, you know, politics, those who live with disability, mm -hmm. persons living with disability in Nigeria, how do you think they have fared? Have they been discriminated? Have we made progress? What has been the journey and the story? Yeah, I think um, we can tag the story of persons living with disability with um, issue of stigmatization and marginalization. A lot of people living with disability are not being catered for. And, you know, it starts from the foundation. Let's look at education, for example. How many persons, you know, living with disability are being educated, not just being in school. The real question is, are they being provided, you know, the necessary tools that they need while in school? For example, um, a child with hearing impairment, does she have a wearing aid, you know, to facilitate the learning process? Then you move from there to skills, you know, acquisition. If you cannot go to school, at least you should be able to, you know, learn a particular skills, you know. How much of that have the government done? Then you move to the workplace, you know. How much of persons with disability do we have? in our workplace and if all of this is not being catered for if um, um, laws or um, policies are being made but they're not being implemented it's also going to you know um, disrupt the whole process of ensuring that persons dealing with disability are being included in the society and a lot a lot of organization you know are coming up to speak up that persons living with disability must be properly you know empowered before we can you know, categorically say that, okay, they are going for um, electoral position or to be nominated in any political position. Mm. So, but in all of this, what would you say is a challenge in that uh, you know, holistic analysis that you have given? We can start with accessibility issue. You know, most of our buildings in Nigeria are not accessible, even our roads. We, you know, we neurotypicals, we also have our issues, you know going from one um, location to another. Imagine someone on a wheelchair. How does such a person assess our roads here and everything? Then we can also move on to healthcare. If you do not have, you know, um, if you're not in good health, how then do you go about saying you want to vie for a position or you want to um, work in a place? So the challenges are like different disabilities with their own pe peculiar challenges that face them. For example, um, a person with um, hearing impairment, visual impairment, there's so many groups of um, disability. So if we do not look at it one after the other, what works for A might not actually work for B. And then we have you know, the saying that there is nothing um, for us without us. So I've seen a lot of people, a lot of um, organizations, or even governments you know, trying to prefer solutions to persons with disability without including the set of persons with disability, then how are you sure that whatever solution that is being getting from that is actually going to solve you know, that challenge? So, so, so do you think that that's the case with Nigeria, that uh, those who live with disability are not carried along in, in terms of policy formulation? I think most times, yes. They are not being carried along. You know, you have meetings, you have electoral, uh, INEC organizing trainings, 
for um, to train their ad hoc staff. The real question is, do you have persons with disability in that training to actually state out what their challenges are? But I remember that in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, 2018 prior to the 2019 elections, INEC made a lot of persons there, you know, those who were living with disability were part of the, you know, observing community. They were observers for the elections. And so uh, I'm beginning to wonder when you say that, uh, you know, government is not including these persons in, okay. in the policy formulation process. On Let's take it on a percentage. Okay. How many persons were involved in that process? Just like you said, we have over 19 million persons with disability in Nigeria. So if INEC has gone up to train their staff, okay, when you get to the polling unit, these are the things you need to watch out for, these are the things you need to do. The real question is, on the day of the election, are these things being really implemented? And if they are being implemented, are they being done in a proper way? Or are they, are they doing it just to tick, you know, in their list of, things they've done that oh we've implemented persons with disability um they were at our polling unit and all of that the real question is are they really really being involved just like we will say if you want to do something for the youth let the youth to be the, um, the set of people that will be there to really state that these are the things that we need so if that is not being done i think our governments you know and even organizations tso's that are trying to you know um, create awareness for persons with disabilities. We should involve persons really living with disability in that process so that they are able to say exactly what they need, what the government can do, what individuals can do, what CSOs can do to actually make, you know, it's like a combined effort. We can't do it alone. And when this effort comes together, it actually have like a um, huge effect. Okay, so, but uh, let's get back to, you know, the 2023 elections. What are the uh, legal frameworks or uh, policies that have been put in place to ensure that there's inclusion of persons with disability. Are there any? Of course. Um, there will always be, you know, policies. There will always be uh, hats that are being put in place. For example, uh, one of these is that when anybody with disability is on the queue, you should give them um, priority first. So if you have someone with um, a walking stick or someone with visual impairments or someone with um, hearing impairments or someone in a wheelchair or any other disability, you should give them, you know, the first power with that is they should cast their vote first. But the sort of the matter is, do people now, not with the um, ad hoc staff of the INEC officer, but now, do people already have this understanding that when you see a person with disability, you have to give them that opportunity for them to cast their vote first? Because if that orientation and that awareness is not there for people, then you have people shouting, oh, I was on the queue no, first, no, I was on the no, line No, no, no. So I, I think that before we, you know, we get to that point of you know, acceptance of the people, I mean, general acceptance by uh, the public or every other person, mm -hmm. uh, I want to begin to look at, we know that there's been a budget that's been made for uh, the inclusion. Just like it was stated, the INEC chairman had mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, there's a provision for when you're filling your you know, filling the forms, forms you would yeah. indicate the kind of uh, disability that you're faced with. And this will make for provision. So I'd like to ask, pre the election, I mean, we're still pre-election now, uh, you know, so do you think that INEC, all of this has been encapsulated, the means of communication, all of the equipments that are necessary because we're talking about persons living with disability, are there provision of these things? They're not just regular, for instance, those who cannot see. Mm -hmm. uh, have this necessary, you know, equipment been provided by INEC and, you know, the relevant bodies uh, saddled with the responsibility of conducting the elections? Uh, that's where I'm driving at. Okay. Um, so, uh, like I said the other time, it's very easy, you know, to say this will be provided for, but we cannot really ascertain how much of this equipment will be provided for on the day of election. So, for example, just like you said, persons with visual impairments, they should be provided a magnifying glass so that, you know, when they get there, they're able to, you know, see the ballot paper and cast their food without um, a third party telling them, oh, this is where you need to turn print and all of that. Um, for example, um, people with hearing impairment, there should be a sign language interpreter right there to interpret what has been written or if someone is trying to communicate with them. But like I said, we cannot really, you know, ascertain how much of this is being prepared for until the day of election. No, no, but until the day of election, there's registration. Of course. So, so 
um, if, if that's not there during the period of uh, registration? Because uh, there's no way you cast your vote without having to, you know, go register, get your PVCs and what have you. So I'm talking about that entire process. Of course, you know, right now people are getting their PVC. So that has already been, you know, in the, in the form. People have already indicated, oh, I'm someone living with this disability. I'm someone living with this disability. I wouldn't this type So in the of process condition. of this registration, uh, were these things provided for? Do you think they were provided for? You know, you need the magnifying glasses and what yes, you do. Of course, that. you know, in some, in some centers, they do have access to all these things. Of course, while in some centers, it might not be the case. For example, in Lagos, in Abuja, there are people, you know, who have been able to say that, oh, when they went to register for their um, PVC, they were able to see uh, it, a sign language interpreter that they were able to provide with the necessary help. But let's take it back to the north. Is, still, is it the same thing over there? So that's why I, I, I explained the other time that, it is easier for the INEC, you know, to say they will provide this, but how much of it will be provided for is another thing that we also need to look into. So, for example, in a particular street, with street, we have like, let's say, five polling units. So, is INEC able to give each polling unit their own sign language interpreter? Are they being able to give them their home magnifying glasses? Because I can tell you, almost every homes, almost every house has persons living with disability in it. So, but... Um uh, understanding what it is and looking at our climb, uh, like you have rightly mentioned, we're a country that's still grappling with a lot of issues. Uh, if you say, of course, persons who those who live with disability should be considered in terms of road infrastructure, uh, special facilities for them because of this impairment. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that we're still also grappling to have the basic things. <laughs> so those who are not, you know, disabled, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily, might necessarily not be an issue of marginalization, just an issue of leadership that has not been able to cater for the entire populace without saying, okay, you are, you're tilting towards the side or you're tilting towards the other side. But, you know, um, still looking at this particular issue now, what do you think are the challenges? Why uh, do we have all of this obstruction I think the foundational cause of it is um, lack of awareness. Let me put it that way. You know, take for example, while we're growing up, how many persons with disability do we know, you know, that we are our friends? We probably don't have any. And, you know, it just goes on like that. Back like 20, 30 years ago, are people living with disability, are they being educated? So if they are not being educated, this is just like a um, virtual circle of poverty. It just goes round and round and round. Before you know it, they are being excluded. And just like you said, we neotypicals are still trying to grasp at the basic necessity of life. How much more for persons living with disability? But the truth of the matter is we cannot continue to feel like because um, other people are still trying to, you know, get their own basic needs and then we continue to um, segregate some set of people. It's just, it will continue that way. And it's, we are not going to be having all the resources at once. It's not possible. We are not going to jump out of recession, out of whatever it is that we have in the country at once. So as we grow, we need to also consider persons with living with disability along the journey. Because if not, at the end of the day, we are going to still have the cases of where the typical beings like me and you have gone far ahead and then people with disability are just trying to come up to us. In the workplace, I say this all the time, how many persons with disability do we have? So if persons living with disability do not even have, they're not even independent, you know, how much more will they be able to say they want to go to the polling unit to vote? And people can also recognize the fact that they have the right to actually vote. You see people with disability at the polling unit and people will be looking at them like, what have you come here to do? Do we need people like you here? So, 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 let, let's, let's also still continue in this light. Now, apart from the fact that, you know, we talk about political apathy. And that's a, you know, condition or situation where people just feel like, hey, I don't want to be part of the electoral process. Yeah. So do you also think that political apathy is also a major issue why uh, those living with disability are excluded from the political process? Not necessarily that they have been marginalized. Yeah, I think it's also part of it. For example, when they say, let's say there's a meeting in a particular building, and then it's not even accessible for them. How do they go you know, going about for them to be in a particular party? And if that is not there, then they decide to just stay alone. And even 
probably persons living with disability might just form their own party and then feel like, okay, since we are being excluded, we don't want to be part of what does not work. These are things that we need, and if these things are not being met, probably they have the, we have our own party, and then we are able to do things in our own way. But I think the major um, issue here is, in as much as the government is still trying to, you know, provide, in as much as INEC is still trying to put in place different things that will enable persons living with disabilities to have a smooth um, voting um, process, we as individuals also can also make it possible for them. When we get to the polling units, when we see them, you know, vying for a position, we should support them. Like I said, the government cannot do it alone. The support of we individuals within the community is so important. And by giving them this support, they also have the strength to continue to carry on. You know, persons with disability go to workplace for interview, and immediately you see them, you tell them, oh, sorry, um, this job is closed for now. Or they go to a party, they want to join, and they tell them, oh, sorry, we don't have provisions to cater for the kind of person that you have. So if all these bottlenecks are not being removed for persons living with disability, then the, the process will just continue that way. So while we're waiting for INEC to provide us with everything that we need, while we're waiting for government to you know, step up to their responsibility, we as citizens, we as individuals, we also have a major role to play. I say this all the time. We also have a major role to play to ensure that persons living with disability are not being excluded in our community. So, so how, how, what would you say is the level of inclusion now for the 2023 elections? I mean, pre-election, uh, those who are vying for political offices, do you have, what's the number? What's the statistics? And uh, those who, would, who have registered, uh, you know, to cast their votes, and how many persons have collected their PVC. Can you, you know, give us an idea of, you know, a percentage, maybe in percentage or, you know, in, in figures? Okay, um, I would say for um, the percentage and the numbers in figure, I, I'm not sure we have that. But let me just give a, like an overview of what I know um, um, now currently that is obtainable. Let's say 25% out of 100%. Because, you know... Will be involved in this election. No, I've collected that PVC. Like, just what you asked about, people who have collected that PVC and all of that. I would say maybe 25% out of 100% of people who have um, registered for it. Then, you know, it's a different thing to collect your PVC. And it's another different thing to go out to vote on the day of the election. So in terms of persons living with disability, how they are kind of ready to go out to vote, I'm not sure I'll be able to give 35% for that. Like I said... Even getting your PVC is enough work on its own. How do a person leave their own home or wherever they're staying to go to the um, collector, collection points to get their PVC? And if they find it difficult to do that, then they would rather not just go you know, all together. And if this PVC is not being gotten, how then do they come out to vote on the day of the election? So I think um, what we can do is, I don't know, maybe government should try and you know, they have a lot of staff that can do all this work. Maybe kind of get the number of persons living with disability, maybe in a particular community, in a particular area, and then allocate a day to them whereby you have to put in place everything that is necessary, remove all barriers to ensure that they come in. in. Because better persons with disability get into a place to collect their PVC, and then there are like 500 of you know, um, neurotypical beings like us waiting to collect their PVC. There's no seat available for them, there's no body ready to stand up to give it to our seats to the person that has just come in. Probably, depending on the challenge. Depending on the challenge. Probably limping, using a walking stick, um, visually impaired. But then the person waits for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The body is already, you know, not the same. The person probably needs to leave. So if I go into, a, uh, into um, the collection point to get my PVC and I didn't get it that day, how, you know, happy will I be to go back the next day knowing what I'm going to face there? So I'll say, you know, if we really want people with disability to be involved in this election, then I can declare a day. Okay, today, let's have persons living with disability go to their um, um, or INEC offices and get their PVC. So we know that that day is for persons living with disability. Priorities will be given to them. They will get their PVC as early as possible and they can leave the place. On the day of election, the same thing also applies. They get in there as early as possible. They cast their votes. Immediately they get there. 
People will be, you know, when they experience this during this election, by the time the next election is coming up, you do need to do any further, you know, sanitization. They'll be much more happy to go out to vote. So, like I said, government have their own part. We individuals will also have our own part to play. It's a collective effort to ensure that persons living with disability does not continue to be stigmatized. So um, the issue of political apartheid is not just, uh, you know, what we experience entirely, but there's also, uh, we can say that a lot of persons in the society, especially those living with disability, have been excluded from the political process mm -hmm. uh, because of lack of provision and being sensitive to their needs. Exactly. So categorically, uh, now that you have mentioned some of these issues, but you know, in other light, general inclusion in society, what steps can the government take? What steps can individuals take? What steps can different stakeholders, you know, take to ensure that persons living with disability on every other day are not discriminated, they are included? I think the first step is we should move away from words into action. You know, most times we spend a lot of time talking holding stakeholders meeting, town hall meeting, trainings, what have you. Let's move away from that point into action. A lot have been said already. Can we start, you know, involving practical steps? For example, government, you will have policies, we have rules, we have laws guiding persons with disability. But are they being implemented? Can a person with disability whose right has been violated take, you know, take it to court? And can it be acted upon? And you know the, the case is not being dismissed. That oh, it's just a little case. Let us dismiss it. In terms of um, CSO, can we also provide you know other support for them? For example, you get um, CSO are also outside doing an um, election process. You get to a polling unit. You see that they do not have enough facility. Can it be provided immediately? Individuals, when you get to the polling unit, you do not just you know you're not talking about yourself only. You're also trying to ensure that the next person with disability either in front of you or at your back, is also um, being carried along. So I think we should move away from words into actions and implementation. I tell you, I, I see this all the time. Most of the things we are trying to fight for, most of the things we are trying to talk about, if government should make a policy, a rule, and it's been implemented, we will not be going through all this stress again. Because if people do not act on it, then we can take it up from there. But if, you know, all these things are not being done. We just continue to have this discussion all the time. And then awareness. The more people are aware, I think the less stigmatization we'll have. People should learn to understand that people living with disability do not pray for it. They do not ask God for it. It just happened. And you know, when it happens like that, we should accept them and make provisions for them. Well, uh, Omoto, okay, we have to go at this point in time. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for, uh, for making me. our time to talk about this very important category of persons in our society. And as we inch closer to the elections uh, in February 2023, it's important that we make provision for the inclusion of these persons who are Nigerians. And I'm sure that that would, you know, do the magic for, you know, the numbers and the figures that... Uh, each political gladiator is anticipating to win the elections. And that's the size of it. We take a break. When we return, we'll have some more conversation. Please stay with us.